Vox Super Foundation Bass. This is a solid state amplifier from the late 60s. This is in for us a good service. So we're going to take it apart and have a look inside, see what needs doing. So if we just have a look at the amp, we've got, and you can't see on the top there, but we've got a distortion here. So it must, uh, I don't know, do we have distortion on bass? We maybe did in those days. And we've got some and effects, so we'll have to see what that's about. MRB effects. Let's have a look over the top. So we're looking over the top, you can see we've got a volume, bass and treble for this normal channel, a couple of inputs, a mid boost on there. And then for this channel, we've just got a volume and a tone, a couple of sockets there. That distortion control is a bit stiff, so we'll have to have a look at that. Let's have a look at the back. So you can see you've got a voltage selector on there, the on off switch, fuse. Someone's fitted a IEC socket in there, it had a ball gin before, one of the old fashioned ball gins that's gone. And uh, got another on off switch there. Ew. Not sure why we've got two on off switches. We'll have to have a look on the schematic. We have got a schematic for this amp, which is good. 15 ohms only load look. Which is strange for a solid state amplifier, but 15 ohms it is. So I've got the back off. You can see all the heat sinks on there. Let's have a look what those transistors are. Not quite see from here. You can see I've got this out there, the cabinet, this is just the power amp section, the plug socket there is for, is for just unplugging the preamp. We can see there's been some work done on this amp, these rather large capacitors. But you can see work has been done on here, and they've added these, these radials have been added a bit, not particularly the best. We got this screw here that can touch that and go to ground. So that's not very good. So we need to look at those. A couple of resistors been added in there to make up a value by the look of it. Let's look on this board. And again, we've got this possible touching there to that screw, which is not great. Let's have a look underneath. Right, I've got the macro lens on, so we're looking in here. So a couple of things going on there. This we need to look at, this, these. But other than that, there's not, not a lot in there really. Need to get the schematic sorted out for it. Hmm. So that's a look at the power amp section. Now that one of the problems with this amp is it has new power on one of the channels, and uh, the other one's not great either. So we're more than likely going to be looking for that on the preamp stage. So we just need to look, have a look at that, and that's what we'll do now. We'll take out the preamp stage and have a look at that. Right, we're inside the preamp, and you can see that uh, there's been a lot of work done in here. A lot of capacitors changed, apart from all these yellow ones. Just looking at the soldering on this jack plug here. Just go in. See there. That's cold solder on there. So we need to look at that. Nothing major though. This is loose on here. You can see.
But yeah, a lot of capacitors have been changed on here. And you'd like to hope they were, they were all the correct value. Looks like every electrolytic has been changed in this amp. Pretty. That one's been joined there. You can't see that I'm in too close there. That really should be fastened down. It's just floating around. Not a lot in it really. We'll just check some resistors and things and we're going to have to check these capacitors just to see if they're okay. But with the amount of work that's been done in this, if it's been not been done if it's been done right then that's fine, but if it's not, then that's part of the problem we've got with low output. This could be a minefield. Looks like we've got geranium transistor there. Maybe and that looks like one of the original transistors. That one does there. All the transistors look original. Just this massive recap job that's been done. Right, so I'm just getting in with the hand held on this box and I, I've been just having a bit of a, a look around it and you can see that board there and if we look and you can see that's all crumbled away. So what they've done, they've changed these capacitors at some time but never bothered to check that up there and it, that's not been, well I don't know whether it's ever been soldered but that's been like that for years. So... That might not be the problem, but that's certainly a major problem. That's the ground on those caps. Now, if we look, we've got a board. That's the left side. Uh, sorry, the right side. And that's the left side. So we've got a board each. So it's the right channel as well that's down on this amp. So that is the first thing that we'll address. We'll clean all of this up and resolder those. And you can see, if you look on this one, it's all, you can go in, you can see it's pretty sand. And if we, uh, excuse me, because I'm on handheld rather than the tripod, and you can see there that's just floating around there. So that's that's one problem that we've found. Now I spoke with with the guy that owns this, and uh, we've I've actually. Uh, video called him on whatsapp and showed him inside of this and we've kind of come to the conclusion that we're going to try and replace all these with axials these radials just they, they look a mess they, they're all loose and wobbling around and i've just been through and made a list we've got you know these things really shouldn't be floating around in a, in a guitar i mean this is a bass amp so probably argue it's even worse they've managed to find a radio uh, an axial for that one and if you go on the vox showroom website there's actually a picture of one of these the preamp section and you can see the the, uh, the guys recapped it made a smashing job of it he's used all you know axial capacitors radials don't belong in here apart from this one which looks like for some reason that must have been a radial because it's solid and it it fit you know the the pins are close together so on you know the holes in the board so i'm going to take these boards up i think if i can find these these capacitors i'm going to change test these and change them if they if they're no good i'm leaving them if they're not the pilot the, the bulbs on this also don't work neither of the, the pilot lights and the standby light so i've had the bulb out which was a bit green on the bottom which i've cleaned you can see the bulb there on there you can see that so 
can't get the bulb out on that one at the minute but we'll keep trying so that's those and then this customer says this boost switch is a little intermittent but that probably just won't clean in and then we've we've got another switch on here like a rotary switch for the effects there and that that just needs a bit of a look at so might not be as bad as we first thought with this amp might not be as bad as we first thought and it's it's worth doing this amp right so we'll check through all the resistors as well just to see if if any of those are badly out but again if they're not miles out i'm going to leave it you know customer says this this amp has a particular sound that he's very fond of so i want to try and keep this amp you know i don't want to be taking all the carbon comps out for the sake of it i just want to leave it and le the original transistors are in it and again if there's no we didn't see any frying when we plugged it in didn't, didn't hear any frying should i say you don't see frying you hear it so we're just going to go through it see try and you know make it look tidy and decent get some better caps in this right i'm going to start on this preamp first and get these caps changed we've only got one cap on here to change i've got this board out and i've actually to get these out i've actually had to if we just have a look if i had to take these these are epoxied in the um the bulbs holders i've actually got that other bulb out as well so you can just see the bolts there so what what i actually got was a slot screwdriver there just put it into the slot sideways and and just manage to get them undone otherwise we'd have been shot for getting those out because you can see those there if we look are epoxied in put epoxy around them so we don't never have got those out without damaging them would have been a nightmare so we've only got we've got this radial on here and that must have been a radial judging by how close together the contacts are we've got one radial here to change now i think that that's a 22 and it should be a 10 so on this schematic which i'm going to get in a minute that's a 47 so we just need to check that but some of these caps in here the 22s that have been put in they should be tens that the only the only axle they put in that the guy put in is a 22 there is no 22s in this amp right so there's the schematic that we've got at the preamp stage foundation base it is the same as the super foundation according to what information i've gleaned off the internet but i've also got a more blown up parts of it here so you can see we've got 10 50 going on there another 10 if you look at the other part we've got blown up there you can see again a bit faint on here might be able to see but we've got 10 50 10 10 going on there 50 10 10 uh, on the second part on here we've got 500 microfarad yeah 50 microfarad there so we've just got that 50 microfarad on this section anything else on the nope so no 20 microfarads and this is one channel that's that that's the normal channel this is the base channel that we've got here i'm just trying to see how that corresponds to this we've only got two transistors on that board we've got two capacitors we've got 470 microfarad oh that that of course will be the 500 of course it will do so we've got that 470 so we presume that that is the 500 we've got a couple of transistors so we've got those there 0.33 and 0 0.22 0 0.22 and i saw that 0.33 there 0.33 so 
So that is looking like that board is for the base channel, this one that we've just removed. Let's have a look at a few capacitors, 51R. Do we see a 51R on there? That's going to be, yeah, 50, 51 ohms. That's green, brown and black. So that's on there. What's that one? Three, 390 ohms. We've got a 390 on there. Anywhere. Just trying to identify the board. 390 ohms. So that's looking like this board. Assuming these capacitors are in good order, we, do, we need to test them. And all these resistors are in good order. That's the only thing we need to change. We'll leave that radio. We'll just put a drop of glue around him. But he looks okay. He's a lumberjack. And he's also 25 volts rating. And if we look, we only need 15 volts on there. So he'll do fine. And the 470 was very springy at 50 volts. And I think the capacitors I've bought for this are 63 volts. If I remember what are those. These are all vichets. We're not yet yeah, 47 at 63. So we've got a bag full of those. So that's what will be going in there. Just need to check these resistors are all good right this board's done clean bill of health those resistors checked out okay these two caps tested perfectly so there's no reason to remove them so that that's all good so the, the only reason we'll, we'll have to revisit these resistors if we find that we've got any frying or anything like that and we may have to go back and revisit but all looks good to me so now we're on to this, this board. Now this has quite a few more capacitors. Well, it has three more capacitors on there. And we just need to again check the resistors. No, none of the yellow type capacitors on there. So this one shouldn't take too long to go through. So let's just have a look at what value. So here we've got a 22 and we've also got a 47 and what's that one that one is 22 so where's the schematic right so let's have a look there so we've got 50 microfarads so we've got 50 there we've got 10 but we've got no 10s in here and then the other capacitor is 10 so they've been there 22 so i've bought some 10s to put those back to original so again same deal we 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 just check the transit uh, all the resistors we know the transistors are all right because this amp has run it's just a bit quiet which we think is due to the the uh, grounds missing on the capacitors on the power amp stage so we've just got three cap three capacitors to change there right that board is now all done and checks good so now we're on to this bigger board this is the normal channel board and I can see a 22 there, 47, 47, 10, what's that one on the side there, 10. So let's just have a look at the schematic, which will be this one on here. And again, we'll just, because it's a little faint, this one, so we'll just drop the lighting a smidge. There we go, so we can see a little better. So this is the normal channel. 50 microfarad there, so we've got 47 for that. 10 microfarad, 10 microfarad, 10 microfarad, 50 microfarad, 10 microfarad, 50... 400 at 4 volts so that that'll be 470 and 10 microfarad no 22s so we've got some 22s it we've got 122 in there i think so we just need to swap that for a 10 as we going through replacing these caps So we've got the caps in now, we've tested all the resistors, all seem good, all test good anyway. And you see we've got the caps, we've got the caps on there and there, we've, we've 
we've cleaned all this these uh, this thing here this three-way toddle switch we've tightened up this thing that was loose these two um, coils there on that mounting frame this pot was stiff we've cleaned this lube we've lubricated it still a little stiff but it's getting better there's a switch down here uh, there we've we've cleaned that as well so this uh, cleaned the pots this should be um, this is ready to go now and I've got the bulbs uh, got this propped up so they don't get broken the bulbs on the front are back in right so all done so I'm going to make this a part one and then in part two we're going to get onto the power amp and get that all restored and I'm quite looking forward to getting this plugged in and having a listen because it, it looks quite a tasty bit of kit this they're quite rare these amps we'll also in part two be discussing the cabinet because the back is missing off the cabinet and obviously the back's got the serial number on but apparently according to the owner the this very amp was up on uh, a website with the back missing and uh, we're going to have a try and I'm going to do a bit of research and try and look into that to see if I can find that all online and I'm going to put an appeal out to see if we can get the back for this amplifier because if you look at the one that, that was on it the customer made that so we're just going to see if anyone still has the back for this and if so would they like to sell it so we can make this amp absolutely all original again but we'll we'll look at that in, in part two so that'll do it for this one so thanks for watching you all take care and i'll see you all in another video bye bye for now